Wakey, wakey, six o'clock on the doors. You're bang on time for Morning Prime. It is the 19th of March, 2024, Tuesday, and you have CS Fiesta coming your way today. Now, yesterday we were telling you regarding the assenting of the housing levy bill that was bound to be yesterday, but that was rescheduled for today. And of course, we shall be crossing there today at eight o'clock where the president will be holding that particular signing of the housing levy bill. Of course, it has been a catnip issue in the country as we know it, and we'll give you that coverage live from State House from 8 o'clock this morning. But we continue best with the conversation here, looking at what is uh, making headlines as far as politics is concerned as well. We'll be joined momentarily by Dr. Tina Molo, who is a Senate Council Member of Parliament for Rarieda. Also be joined by Dan Mazu, who's a Senator for Makueni. We'll be joined as well by Owen Bayer, Member of Parliament Khalifi, also Deputy Majority Leader at the National Assembly, and also CAS Wilson Socion. That story of the CAS has continued to draw a lot of reactions right now that we have members of the JLAC from the National Assembly saying the President has all the wiggle room, he can swing his cut the way he wants as far as numbers are concerned on appointing the CSS. Right, what does that really pretend? We know that was declared unconstitutional by the courts, and we shall be looking at that. Having also Atena Molo on the desk that uh, or on the panel this morning, we know he was a member of the Committee of Experts who drafted the Constitution. Like, let's see what uh, the weather will be today. Let's see how the papers will be today. This is what you're waking up to, the front page of the standard housing billions. Ruto has his way, raiding pockets. President today ascends to bill that will see him collect 90 billion shillings more in revenue to construct affordable houses. The journey has been steep, but the government will have the last laugh unless someone pulls a fast one yet again. The other story on page six, uh, 78 billion shillings, that is the revenue collected through the levy, expected to grow gradually to uh, 70 billion shillings in 2024-2025 financial year and 78 billion shillings in the 2025-2026 financial year. Housing billions, Ruto has his way, as I mentioned, the president will be signing this into law. It has gone through the requisite uh, phases of uh, legislation processes there in the National Assembly 
having been debated and right now is waiting for the ascension of the president. You can read all about it on page six of the standard today. And from the end of this month, now that will be deducted from your salary. That is the standard today. Also, Hurukin makes 15th attempt to reclaim three billion shillings land. That is another story to follow on. On page two and three of the standard today, hospital asks NHIF holders to pay cash. That is on page five of the standard today. Absa Bank to pay out seven billion shillings as dividend. It's glory, glory, Man United yet again. Page 40 of the standard is where you can follow that story and certainty as ministry chops school or school's money. Education Ministry says it's facing a 22 billion shillings shortfall attributed to stagnant funding for six years despite a surging students or uh, student population. This story continues on page 10 of the standard today. Joho says he's best place to run ODM. And that is on page 7 of the standard today. Financial standard comes it comes in handy for you. Get all the wise as far as financial matters are concerned. 14 years on, Kenya's oil dream still a mirage. That has not been realized. And Nakomisha, doctors haggle, patients are dying. As Nakomisha, doctors haggle, patients are dying. That is a story that you ought to follow on page four of the standard. It's now payback time for Ryla as his stars align. ODM leader Ryla Odinga has been a key power broker for years, but he's finally on the verge of sitting at the table and making key decisions. That story continues on page 12 of the standard this morning. This is our looks. The Daily Nation up next, exposed shame of globe-trotting county officials. It's all about austerity, but counties continue to operate against presidential directive. That is what the flagger is reading on top there. Damning verdict, uh, damning verdict it says. On October 30th last year, two seven-member delegation from Kitui County Assembly flew to Singapore to attend workshops and spent over 22 million shillings for the five-day junket. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. As a control of budgets report for the final half of the last year found, some counties were splashing more on travel than they were generating in own source revenue. This story continues on page six and seven of the Daily Nation this morning. And you can see there's a tabulation there on how they spent it county and the travel expenses in millions. Um, that is uh, also the given on source revenue in shillings as well. So they're spending so much, and also look at the on source revenue and this, the expenditure on travel, it really boggles your mind. Bomet leading there, 128.62 million shillings. On source revenue, 67.7 million shillings. Busia follows there, 165.9. And uh, we have on source revenue, 133. Right? They're traveling more than actually. They're generating revenue. You have Kericho 257 and uh, on source revenue 161.34. Kitui 323.78 million shillings. On source revenue that they collect from there is 70.99 million shillings. Mandera 66.33. Elis. Uh, the on source revenue is 51.48 million shillings. We have Marsabit 138.42. And on source revenue is 60.12 million shillings, Nandi 204.27. And uh, the on source revenue is 136 million shillings, 123.18 million shillings for Nyamira, 117.59 on source revenue, Tana River 160.03, uh, on source revenue 30.84 million shillings, Turukana 335.88 million shillings, 106.98 million shillings. That is the on source revenue. Wajir, 127.68 million shillings, 49.92. That is 49.2, I should say. That is the on source revenue. Baringo, 214.81, 86.91 on source revenue. West Pocot, 81.24, 24.46. That is the on source revenue. So they are living beyond their means, as you can see it. But is it warranted? Right, we don't get all the details on page six and seven of the Daily Nation this morning. Doctor strike still on as stocks collapse. That is on the back page of the Daily Nation this morning. The star is up next. Why trouble looms for feuding governors and deputy governors? On Thursday, senators kicked out Kisi deputy governor, ending row with Governor Harati. That story continues on page four and five. And also, this is where 
They are not seeing eye to eye. We have Kisi, Simbarati governor, and uh, Robert Mwanda, who has been impeached right now. We have Karicho Eric Mutai, who is a governor. Fred Kirui, deputy governor. Also, these are troubled counties. George Natembea and uh, the deputy governor. Philomona Kapkurir. We have in Siena as well. James Orengo and William O'Dwell. They don't see eye to eye. We have Kawira Mwangaza who is a governor of Meru, and Isaac Mutuma also, they don't see eye to eye, and Machakos as well, uh, Francis Mwangangi and uh, Wavinian Deity, they don't see eye to eye. That is the story I want to follow inside the star this morning, and Killer Wife from Kangemi gets 35 years on appeal. Nyanza MPs join battle for takeover of ODM, the success battle within ODM has taken a new twist with some MPs from Raila Odinga's backyard alone. Uh, back yet also angling for the job we have that is the top job Raila who is exiting local politics to pursue a continental job at the African Union Commission was widely expected to be succeeded by his two deputies weekly for Paranya and Hassan Joho that story you have it on page six of the star this morning Mwangi remand stint pushed me to help others uh, you can read all about his story on page 21 of the star People Daily, Governor raise, governors raise red flag on health. Counties warn of crisis due to failure to renew contracts of essential service providers and servicing of specialized care hospital equipment. Stocks with striking doctors start on the wrong footing. This story continues on page four of the People Daily. Also end of the road for dreaded drug lord. Gashagwa, I lost my brother to alcohol. That is the story to follow inside the star. Eid Mubarak, Tasty Musalia, the spouse of Prime Cabinet Secretary Musalia Mudavadi, joins the Northern Kenyan Women Leaders Caucus, who held an Iftar dinner at Nairobi Serena Hotel. You can follow the story inside the People Daily this morning. Kisu Shingoni, Mwa Shabab, Wa Kenya, that is what Taifa Leo is holding today. Ofichuzi, Wa Anika Jinsi, Magedi Kutoka Kenya, Wanavio Malizo Somalia, Kwa Kushuki Wakua. Majasusi wa polisi. You can follow the story on page two of Taifa Leo this morning. And Murkume na Mshtaki, Cheral Gay, Waziri ya Mpeleka, Senator Mahakamani, kwa kumuhusisha, kumuhusisha, I should say, na ofisari. That story continues on page three of Taifa Leo. Let's buckle down to some business where the splash is all about SGR, how SGR revenues slowed before 50% train fare raise. That is a story to want to follow inside the business daily. Passenger revenue growth slower since pandemic year. KRC blamed the elevated fuel cost for upward revenue. That is a story tucked away on page two of the business daily this morning. Tala Oil writes off 2.4 billion shillings in Kenya project assets. And MPs seek G2G deal for fertilizer imports. Members of parliament are seeking to introduce the government to government procurement model. Uh, which is currently behind, which is currently being used to buy fuel on credit for the purchase of fertilizer. Also, still finds for banks, inter finance fight. That story, you can follow it inside the business daily this morning. In Tanzania, Samia's scorecard, notable achievements in various fields were evident in President Samia Zulu, who has since three, uh, three years in office, but it was not all smooth sailing as there were some challenges too. That is a story you want to follow on page. Uh, two of the two and three of the citizen in Tanzania and you can see the successes and the challenges also they're well illustrated in Rwanda can Rwanda Zimbabwe business drive Africa free continental uh, trade area Zimbabwean companies have invested more than 38 billion dollars in Rwanda you have a story on page three of the publication today, Rwanda Zimbabwe trade increased by increases by 50%. That is a story you can follow inside the New Times. The East Africa this week is all about Kagame. To his party, he says, "Give me a successor. Enough is enough." Says the veteran leader as he goes for fourth term. Even as ruling party shows no interest in replacing him. You have a story on page four and five of the East African this week. East Africa's big three out. To save integration agenda, it's Africa's big three out to save integration agenda. And you can see President Yorim Seveni, 
presenting a framed image of a newspaper report on the reformation of EAC. He and Kenya's William Ruto met with their Tanzania peer Samia Suluhu Hassan in Zanzibar, where they recommitted to support regional integration. Yala 6 open skies for ease of travel trade. That is another story inside the East African this week in China Daily. She sends congratulations to Putin. You can follow this inside the China Daily. Uh, this is how it looks today. Russian president wins fifth term with record total of votes. And we have the economists as well. America's pumped up economy. That is the publication. Time's up for TikTok. Inside Putin's Russia. Crazy Rich Indians, a special report on the oil industry. That is the latest publication there. Also, you have the Newsweek as well. Can Europe fight alone? How an EU army will cop or cop without US support? Uh, that is tucked away inside the latest publication of the Newsweek. And these are the editorial cartoons inside the standard today fitting. The shoes of Rilo Dinga. This is everyone now gagging for that particular top seat, party leader of ODM. And their faces are here also splashed. You can see. I'll leave it for you to decipher that. And this is the 11th commandment. Thou shalt not heckle, especially in Kenya Kwanzaa, strong holds. This is the new commandment from Interior Ministry led by C.S. Kediki, as far as the latest, you know it, what really happened in Kericho uh, or in Bomet, the heckling that was there that we can see now, the Minister of Interior is trying to rein in on those who are heckling. That is a story you can follow in the dailies as well. We'll also give you that story momentarily. All right, and lastly, we can see also in the People Daily, as you can see, we have the tightest security on earth. And uh, this is just talking about the latest U.S. advisory to his citizens here in the country, advising the citizen to hide expensive jewelry watches in Nairobi estate because of the rising crime rate in the country right now. That is inside the People Daily this morning. And the shilling is recovering from the ICU, right? It was in a wheelchair, but now it's on um, crutches right now. As you can see, the shilling recovers. That's the problem question. Uh, so that is one of the publications recently as far as the economy is concerned. All right, time to buckle down to business, talk to our guests as well, just get into Dr. Remarks. We have with us Senior Counsel Lutene Molo, who is a member of parliament for Rarieda. Also, we are joined by Wilson Susion, CAS Tourism. Also, we'll be joined momentarily by Owen Bayer, who is a uh, the Deputy Majority Leader in the National Assembly, Dan Manz as well, the Senator of Makweni. All right, let's just begin with you, Dr. Otena Molo. Good morning, good to see you. Good morning, and uh, thank you for having me, and good morning to Kenyans. Right, uh, you know, today is a big day as well. The ascension of uh, the housing levy bill finally goes down uh, as far as uh, the fight has been. For us, it's yes. not a big day. It's not a big day. Uh, in fact, it's a day to mourn. But before we mourn the housing bill, <laughs> Let me mourn Rita Tinina, yes. uh, who passed on over the weekend. Uh, I'd known her for some time in interviews and all that. And uh, uh, I hope that they get to know the cause of her death. Mm -hmm. um, I decry this many instances of sudden and unexplained deaths. And, and it's happening in many places. I know of so many friends who have gone that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's even need to try and find out what really could be the cause. Yes. There are some who are speculating that part of it could be related to the post-COVID uh, effects. But whatever it is, the doctors and scientists owe it to us to let us know what could be um, happening. Mm -hmm. But as for the housing bill, uh, all we would do is say what we usually say when friends uh, leave us. Uh, they fought a good fight. In this case, we fought a good fight. We lost uh, the battle to those who do not uh, want to listen. 
and so we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, uh, we shall be picking up with this much, much later. Let's hear from uh, Wilson Sosion. Yes. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you after a little while. And uh, also join my lawyer here, Kendo Mole in Morning Rita Tenina, and the entire media fraternity. It's, uh, that was a shocking uh, report, and uh, I believe all shall be well. And uh, the housing bill being ascended into law today is a major turning point in settlement in Kenya. And uh, there will be an extremely new, irreversible model going into the future. And that uh, the next generation of young Kenyans will not need any more to get loans from circles and struggle to get resources and uh, go through uh, very difficult processes of building homes, there will be affordable homes availed through this model. And this is perpetual, it's going to work for a long time. And uh, I said one time in this show, in the next 20 years, somebody will praise uh, the president for coming out very strongly with this type of model. Uh, on Friday, no, on Saturday rather, uh, we accompanied the president to unveil the housing model, the housing uh, uh, project in Bomet County, and uh, there will be close to 10,000 units in the long run. And uh, I could see institution angling to get their staff to, to to buy houses like Bomet University and the rest. So I believe this is a very very noble undertaking that is not only going to provide settlement but is going to transform the economy spar business spar manufacturing and also create jobs and that is what we need as a country it is a bold step it's a good decision and uh, i would urge my brother Utienda Molo to relax a bit uh, what you can't stop uh, especially when there are good things let them be so i i, I think with time in future you will be one of the few Kenyans who will be praising this model <laughs> in future. In future. Yes. Right. For a moment also, I thought that uh, Owen Bayer will be in State House this morning. So, <laughs> yeah, to make sure that, uh, yeah, he's also observing the, the signing ceremony of assenting into a bill, I mean, assenting into law, this particular bill. Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. How are you? Very well. Everybody. Uh, nice to be here again this morning. And, um, Yes, it's one of those uh, uh, landmark moments in Kenya as we move towards um, uh, the new housing or affordable housing. And um, we, we passed the bill in uh, Parliament and um, Senate had uh, several amendments uh, to it and uh, we adopted the amendments of Senate. That's why this bill did not go to mediation. We agreed as a uh, general, as a principle that let's pass the amendments by the, the Senate or let's uh, adopt the amendments of the Senate so that we, we are able to move forward and give uh, this government an opportunity to implement one of its key pledges. Uh, the housing, affordable housing, is not just about affordable housing. It's also about jobs created for Kenyans, for young Kenyans that are looking for an opportunity to make money. Um, uh, you know, there has been this argument that uh, we are only making construction jobs. It's not about that. You have architects who will, uh, uh, in, in the long run, uh, make money because of their profession. We have electricians, we have engineers, we have uh, financiers, we have, th there's so many, the housing sector touches so many people. There are stories, true stories, where, uh, for example, the doors that are being used, you know, there are very many carpenters that are out there making doors because they're locally sourced, making doors for, for, for these houses. They're making millions of windows uh, for, 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 for these houses. Those are jobs that are being created. There are the, the uh, tile manufacturing uh, companies that have employed many people. Those tile manufacturing companies will be in business for the longest time because we have uh, the, the affordable uh, uh, housing. So Debar, there has been this notion that it is just about the president collecting money and using it to build houses. But 
on the other side, it is a beautiful thing for Kenya because um, models are out there in the world. If you, you, you go to Singapore, Singapore is a country that has built itself on the, on, on the story of affordable housing. One, it provides houses and, uh, you know, for, for, for people. But again, it grows the economy. Thank you. They are, they are, the port of Mombasa is going to benefit because a lot of materials that are not available here will be imported. We have duty that we'll, uh, we will get, you know, from, 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 from uh, and revenue that we'll get from the imports that we come into to the country. Again, during Kibaki's time, I remember uh, he used to say this, foreign direct investment is one of the key ingredients to developing a robust economy foreign direct investment, not aid, but foreign direct investment. What we are seeing in the housing sector is um, a lot of foreign direct investment. Today, there are very many people that are trooping into this country, entrepreneurs from all over the world that are trooping in this country, that have money, that say we want to invest in the affordable housing. This is money that is coming into the country. It will strengthen the dollar. We will, um, it, it will strengthen the dollar, but more importantly, uh, the ball jobs for Kenyans, All right, jobs, you. that is what this, right. this, this new uh, space that we're trying to occupy, we're going to occupy, the housing will create jobs. And that is what uh, my friend uh, and the senior counsel does not understand. Right. And that is why he vehemently opposed. Okay. He, he doesn't want the people of Rarieda to own houses. He doesn't want the people of Rarieda to make money through making windows and doors. We have very good carpenters from uh, his, his area very good welders from his area. But uh, when he stands in parliament and says that he wants to oppose this housing bill, uh, my friend Atenda Molo, he's telling the people of Rarieda, I am shucking off my duty as your representative. I do not want you to make money. I don't want you to get wealthy to, through this. So um, the people of Rarieda need to rethink All right, the, the people leadership of, of Atenda Molo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Mola, so you think uh, this <laughs> Let me tell bring, you. brings brings the Let debate to a final the end because no. uh, this will sound it will not. once it's assented to it it brings the debate in parliament to a final end, but the debate among the citizenry is only starting. Let me tell you, this is a moment for mourning for Kenyans, but it's a moment for celebration uh, for the cartels. <laughs> And uh, when you hear my two friends here trying to explain so much, almost apologetically, <laughs> all that they're saying is was in it was stories are jab. <laughs> because, look, first of all, this thing of, uh, you know, for, for me, I don't even want to talk too much because I said all there is to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, the people of Rarieda know I'm building for them affordable housing as far as I can afford from my sources without taxing them. I've done about 100. You, you are taxing every person 1.5 percent and those employed another 1.5 percent from the employer and it is on gross salary even the amendment to try and make it <laughs> on net failed it's on gross salary mm -hmm. can you imagine that's mm -hmm. a lot of money and the papers have captured it well the focus is on the money it is not on the houses or on the jobs that they're talking about. It's just on the money. And that's why I said in Parliament that at the end of the day, the focus of this regime is on the funds, not on what it is, why it is, who should benefit from it, or how. So once they get the money, they're just happy with it. And you see, even when the court stopped this process, they were collecting money. No one has told us to date where that money went. And no one will tell you in the fullness of time because they've removed those powers from absolute control of the control of budget to the board. Um, trying to change this thing from what it was initially, that it's about affordable housing to jobs, just tells you how inept the whole thing is. Mm -hmm. And besides, it is so ironical that Kenyans who are already overtaxed, and most of whom have more basic needs like food and water and health, which is now in dire straits, are being overtaxed and told, just pay more taxes so that we create jobs for you. <laughs> who, who asked for overtaxation so that they get a job? Yeah? Who, who wants to pay 100 shillings so that they get a, a building job, yeah? for 10 shillings? It's just uh, absolute hogwash. But for me, it's a debate that um, it's now out there and the irony of it is this. 
when it first emerged in, in the National Assembly, even Owen Bayer here uh, was loud in saying, oh, this one does not consult county, so it should not go to the Senate. It took a lot of our talk to persuade them on that. It finally went to the Senate. But as we were debating, they were instructed not to change clauses, even clauses that were obvious, you know? So every time we tried, then they would say, put the question. <laughs> so it went to the Senate in a very bad state. Now, the Senate, you know, in its favor, tried. There are few clauses they managed to amend which were really outrageous. Now, the irony of it is that Owen Bayer now led the choir in saying the Senate amendments are good. The very amendments that they had opposed in the National Assembly, we could have amended it before it comes to Senate. But the tragedy is that in saying, creating certain amendments, the Senate also introduced worse and uh, you know, other clauses which are much worse <laughs> than the original clause. Uh, for example, and I'll just give you one, and I pointed out to uh, uh, the National Assembly here. The Senate introduced a clause 31 that now says that once you purchase that unit, you cannot resell it or, or do anything with it without the express consent of the board. This is now, you have been told that you can buy an affordable house, Dibal. You have saved what you can and you bought it. But your child is sick, needs to go to India and you need to sell it. But you are being told you cannot. Article 40, I'm telling you, Article 40 of the Constitution expressly outlaws that. Says that Parliament cannot pass legislation that limits your right as a property owner. So they are even confused in their model. Right. So they are saying, <laughs> they are even saying it's affordable houses which you can buy, but even though you buy it, it's not your property because you can't sell it. You can't do anything with it. So let so me tell you, let me tell you, to, uh, to at the end of the day, before selling it. we've ended up with a mongrel that is unrecognizable, that is so dangerous that in the fullness of time, this debate is only starting. For us, we had our say in the National Assembly, in the Senate, uh, those Kenyans who listened to us listened. Most Kenyans were opposed. This regime refused. But the debate will continue. But you see, I don't think they will listen anyway because they don't listen, provided the money will keep flowing in. <laughs> Let me ask you, so you mentioned uh, they seek the consent of a board. Which board are you talking about? There's something called the housing board. The housing board? Yes. Which, <laughs> which, <laughs> which now basically has control of the funds. I told you in this show last week, that part of the design of the problem with this whole bill is that it appears to try and claw back the powers even of the controller of budget in terms of controlling the monies that have been contributed by of taxation and is giving the board the powers even to draw those monies, determine its use and all that. That is the same board that is now, <laughs> even after you buy the property from it, you cannot sell it, you cannot deal with it unless they expressly consent. But it's your property. It's not their property. So conceptually, a number of things still remain. One, to date, that act does not determine whose land it is on which these houses are being built. They have this model of taking land from the county. And then you're using national, uh, national government is constructing. And the act does not resolve the question of land. That is fundamental. Because the owner of the land becomes the owner of the property. Two, it does not resolve the fundamental question of how do you own private property on public land? That is not resolved at all. <laughs> Three, it has not resolved the ultimate question of what is the mode of eligibility, ultimately? You know, they tell you, you know, oh, Kenyans, Wilson Sosion, who's my friend, telling me, Kenyans will f finally own land. Which Kenyans? A few cartels <laughs> are not Kenyans. <laughs> so. It does not resolve the fundamental issues at all. <laughs> Let's hear from uh, Dan Mazo, uh, because uh, you had a handy opportunity to actually also weigh in on this particular debate as uh, the Senate. It seems you appear as also you are overwhelmed by uh, the sheer number the in, the, in the Senate as well. Or did they put the question, <laughs> as always? <laughs> the time was reduced from 20 minutes to four minutes, and everything was a rush. And in fact, the bill was never considered. You see, bills in the National Assembly and in the Senate must be considered. And considering a bill is inputting your research and uh, apply the law. 
the question was, is this bill constitutional or not? And that was never addressed by the two houses. The truth of the matter is this bill is unconstitutional. It has a lot of unresolved things. Uh, the government claims that they want to use a model of, uh, you, you know, uh, countries which have been successful in this. Uh, but the first thing they did was to fight corruption. This bill is, uh, has brought in a big time cartel and in fact was being rushed with instructions from the executive. Really parliament didn't make this law and parliament is no longer making law anyway. It has become a rubber stamp of, uh, of the executive. I want to give you an, a good example of the, the so-called houses to be built in Makweni. The president came there two weeks ago. Uh, attending a church service and, uh, and, uh, and a church at Rambi. And uh, this was the main thing, because uh, for, for the last 30 years, there are some government houses on government land which have stalled, you know, for years. And when I was a member of National Assembly, every year I brought in a, a question on that. And every year they will allocate monies and the monies will be withdrawn. So the president promised the people of Makwene that uh, the following Monday, a contractor will be on site who will complete these 200 and something houses. And then they were going to do a thousand houses in Makweni on land which is not determined. And the rest, you know, were going to be, you know, the 700 or so were going to be constructed. So I'll just give you an example. So of course, uh, as the president promised, this contractor never came. And he had asked uh, about a thousand youths to assemble there. They actually did for a week. And, uh, and uh, we realized that, uh, uh, our people have no role in this because, first of all, I believe that if you are going to do this construction, the contractors must be local, local, because it is every county. You, the monies are devolved and should be devolved. Uh, this is already devolved under the constitution. Uh, so, so now, if, if we are going to get a, a contractor from uh, another quarter of the, from Nairobi, then first of all, we have very many contractors in Makwen who can do these houses. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you can see that's already curtailed. Is a cartel coming to Makweni. And now, two weeks later, uh, the promise of the president has never been kept. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and you see, this is what is making people shout at the president wherever he goes to, because they know parliament is no longer functional. Uh, he makes promises. He doesn't keep them. What does he expect the people to do? They obviously shout at him. And when they shout at him, now they make a law. Now there's, there's another law without going through the house some regulation of some sort by my friend, uh, Senator, uh, former Senator Kidik, who is now CS, say that when you shout at the president, then, <laughs> then you must go to jail. <laughs> so, you, you know, so long as you are running a charade, and you pretend that it's a government, and uh, everybody else has been made a psychophant, uh, and th their brains are not in use. There's only one brain seems to be working in the country. Uh, then, 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 then you, are, you are expecting to have a lot of um, chaos in this. Uh, the housing is supposed to be done by the private sector. In most countries, it is done by the private sector. It's being done by the private sector. Thank you. They are the ones employ the people. This one of the so-called government housing, I can assure you, it will never take off because there is no land to build a house. You cannot have a house without land. You must first have land, then you will have houses. All right. Uh, Wilson Sosio, do, so do you think this particular debate, Otende Omolo says that uh, the debate has only begun? Uh, and it appears maybe we are backing or we are batting our heads. We are batting our heads on, uh, the, debate will uh, die on as, the wall. The debate yeah. will die as the programs get implemented. Because these are not programs that are descending from the blues. These are programs that were negotiated with Kenyans. And the president signed several charters with counties and, uh, and is part of the key pillar of Kenya Kwanzaa administration and uh, by the way the implementation program is already on way ahead many many counties that have uh, implemented where this program has been implemented in yes, already, implementation is the fact that uh, there was uh, uh, no the ruling from the court for my brother here <laughs> on Dan man so it will be done in Makwe you ever. will see with your eyes <laughs> There's because, no land. Uh, the housing model is constituency based it will be once at, at, in the fullness of time, once it's rolled out, it will be in all consequences for purposes of equity and for purposes of covering the entire country. Uh, let us divorce general political arguments, and which are more political anyway, they are very political, they are from actual policy implementation. And uh, 
and the need. Does the country need houses? Do you mind, houses? Do you mind teasing yes, that, we, that yes, political yes, argument that you're, you're trying to espouse that is being uh, advanced yes, here? I'll, 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 I'll get to that. Let, let me get you back. This is uh, a, a very key social service that the country needs and it is implemented globally, best practice through social solidarity framework. And that is why you, uh, those employed must contribute. And uh, if you look at the history of these social schemes in Kenya, there is the NHI, it was implemented in 1966. And uh, it's undergoing uh, reforms so that it can, it can uh, deliver universal health coverage. There, there, there is NSSF, it was also implemented in 1966. Uh, and that is going to cover the needs of retirees in this country, which of course is undergoing strengthening in terms of saving and enhanced contribution. Housing, uh, housing was modeled to be implemented in 1967. And uh, to date, no government over the years has been very bold to midwife this process. And if it was done from 1967, we'll not be having all these slums, countless number of slums in Nairobi, countless slums in every town. And I'm sure even in Makweni, if no this slums. is not done, there will be there, no there will be slums at some no slums. at some stage. So, human settlement, and that is that has been modelled by the government through this process of affordable housing, is a masterstroke. It is a solution. We only need to be bold and do it now, because if, even if you talk about the deductions covering gross salaries or net, that is an issue. The issue is. Uh, can we mobilize resources and deliver this within the shortest time possible? The debate that I would appreciate from Otenda Molo and the rest, once a bill has been accented into law, it, 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 it doesn't exist in that state. Anybody can bring in amendments to make it better and to make the model work very well. If, if, uh, if you want to allow the, the tenants who are bought to resell the, 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 the land, then the, their houses, then uh, those are things, matters for debate in terms of legislation going into the future. But picking simple things like who owns land, I, I, I think that is a cheap argument. Land, it doesn't matter where it is. If, if it is government land and it's modeled in terms of housing, it shall be titled. And in fact, if you own a house in a flat, whether it is on seventh floor, you'll always have a title of that, that housing unit that you have owned. Seven, seventh floor in terms of, and and the tender model, and property. our two lawyers here they know that exactly i think uh, the biggest cartel here no 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 the biggest cartel here i do understand just no 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 the biggest cartel here who are fighting back are those who have been in the in 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 the real estate and they know they will lose business and uh, that is why they've sponsored uh, all these cases in court, those who have been in the health sector, the cartels in the health sector. So this housing model is going to eliminate the cartels who have occupied this, uh, this sector for a long time. And, uh, and uh, they know too well that they will be out of business. And uh, we don't need to underscore so the do you benefits. Any, do you have any scrap of proof that, uh, you know, we have cartels who are sponsoring uh, these cases? Uh, yeah, and the petitions that we've had so far, no, because you're raising yeah. issues. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, no, 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 I've they, asked you, I've not asked you. They are there. Where are they? Yeah, they are there. Where? And I'm saying, they're, they're out here. Where is yeah, out here? And they're, they're, they're no, you need to be very factual, yeah, so that yes. uh, if you try to put a point also, I'm, 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 you, you I'm, I'm being factual. If you look at the five pillars of Kenya Kwanzaa, and how some of them have been fought in the courts, those all those court cases, are sponsored by these couple of cartels because they know they will be out of business. That's a fact for right. sure. And, and I don't think you are a judge here so that I can uh, serve you with evidence. But uh, no, 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 the housing scheme is a social scheme that should have started in 1967. Thank you. But in 2024, it has to, it has to take off. Thank you. Let us going into the future, we can engage in the debate. All right. Owen Bayer. I want to say this. You see, 
uh, when uh, senior counsel uh, Atende Omolo says talks about um, uh, taxation levies, you know, he demonizes it like it's not a constitutional thing. Mm -hmm. You know, taxation, Article 209 of the Constitution, allows the national government to levy taxes, mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, to, to do levies and all that. So to come here and demonize uh, taxation, he is a member of Rarieda and he's paid a salary, he's taken care of, he has a car grant, he has a mortgage, he has probably two houses by now that he has bought through mortgage. Because that article allowed uh, government to tax Kenyans and give the money to him. So when he comes here and makes a housing levy as if it is an unconstitutional issue that uh, taxes as themselves are unconstitutional, it is actually uh, uh, um, not correct. And I would expect much more from a senior counsel in issues of taxation. They're constitutional. And therefore, they should not. What they're doing is they're demonizing uh, collection of taxes as if it's not a constitutional issue. It is. Government is allowed to collect taxes and levies. And uh, he sat in parliament to approve the finance bill, you know? And uh, the finance bill levied taxes and many I, other things. I opposed. No, 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 no. no. He I cannot opposed. come here and say he opposed. I, opposed. I didn't see him uh, on the floor. On the record. House, doing that. But I want to go I on to say you this. Now. You can I consult to, the answer to, I, I to, to just to verify. Yes. If, you see, again, uh, hmm. my brother here, uh, senior counsel, talks about uh, uh, issues about um, if you want to sell this house, uh, you must consult the board. Today, his mortgage, he has not uh, cleared uh, his mortgage pain. He cannot sell that house. I don't have a mortgage. Of That's course, I, I will teach you how to benefit no, from I a don't mortgage. Want. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot sell a house that, uh, you know, you cannot sell a house that uh, you are buying through mortgage. You cannot sell that house until you become the owner of the house. You know, and that is the law in Parliament. No. Until, of course, it's, they have never taken, they have no never bought, law. they have never bought uh, <laughs> houses from Parliament. There, so no you can only law. sell uh, the house when you become the owner, not at the point where you are just a buyer or a purchaser. And this is a law that that is something that we had a big argument in in Parliament on. And uh, at Indamolo, I'm glad was there uh, that we tried. Uh, being a lawyer, he could not understand the difference between a buyer and an owner. You know, and I think we needed. We had to to school him yeah, on. We, to by <laughs> we had to school <laughs> him. <laughs> we had to school him on the the difference between a buyer and an owner. You know, so the board is actually uh, rightly, as the Senate amendment came, is rightly okay to say, please, when we give you this house for the at the time when you are still a buyer, you cannot sell it until you become the absolute owner. Uh, of the house. The issue of uh, land, which they keep on talking about, uh, that this land is government land, and therefore, uh, I, you know, I, I, I took some time when this housing issue came up and looked at what does the, what does the Singapore model on affordable housing say? If you go there, they say, this land is government, they have put up houses, and people are invited to buy those properties, okay? And, but the land does not belong to the private sector or to individuals. It belongs to government. And government puts in, in fact, I saw one 160 stories building put up there. And I asked the question, who is the owner of this land? He said, this is government land. And these houses have been put on government land because it is government project. And they, they actually have land bank, land, land banks, you know, that, and that land belongs to government. Nobody owns land in, in, in the Singapore model. But they put up the houses and they invite young people, uh, people who do not have, to come and buy. And when they buy, what they own is a sectional property for which they have. A, a law which is a very good law in this country. I participated in making that law when I was a member of the Land uh, and Physical Planning Committee in Parliament. And we have a law today, if you own a flat, you actually get a, a, a title to it. Alice. And it is the same, uh, whichever name Alice. you give it. Alice. Yes. <laughs> so whichever, whichever it is, but it is working. So when uh, Atende Amolo comes here and tells me that, you know, that land is government land, how do you own uh, the land belongs to government? And it, there are models in this country, this world that are like that, and they have worked. 
and we, 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 we talk big about what has happened in the Asian Tigers in terms of housing sector. We talk big about it. But we, we do not want to implement the same things that have worked in other countries here because of just mere politics, because you want to be seen to be talking about it Thank you. for the fact that you are seen to have opposed. But I want to say this, I was just saying, um, uh, the, the issues of, of, of the land, I want to talk about it. You know, there are cartels in this country that have always uh, looked at government land and, uh, you know, we, they're planning on government land. Cartels that keep on taking away government land. But you see, this housing sector, this housing, affordable housing, has stopped those cartels on their tracks because that's now government is identifying. I was in Kilifi, which is my area. I went to identify government land. I said, this is government land that this one will use for housing. And I go there, I say, this is housing land, and the people who come and say, no, 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 it is our land. We go and check the records, we see that there are attempts to take away the land. But you see, we actually, the housing project that we have is rescuing government land that was actually <coughs> going into the hands of cartels that were actually preparing to take away the land. But I went out there and identified the land, and a lot of the land that I identified, there are people who came and said, you know, you know I have a title, oh, and you know I have a title to this land, why are you taking away? I said, no. This is government land. Everybody knows this is GL. And this GL we are going to use for affordable housing. But I want to put it on record here. Mm -hmm. That uh, today, <coughs> as we speak, the housing projects are going on. I'm waiting for His Excellency the President to come to Kilifi. I have the land ready. I have the contractors that have been uh, uh, contracted to do that Thank work. You. And I can Thank see, you. I can see those families that <coughs> were sleeping hungry because there was no Kibarua they will have a Kibarua. Those hardwares that have been having issues of selling cement, and uh, they will have. A lot of the blocks that are being used for constructing houses, especially right, thank at the you. cost, you, you will point. come from a constituency uh, right, place thank called you, thank Kezo, thank you. with the best building blocks. <clears throat> so th those young people who are there cutting blocks have an opportunity to make money. Don't ever right. look we, we've at We've had this debate. Uh, I, just, I, I, I don't, I don't want to just to deliver uh, the point that... Uh, I want to finish with one thing. You know, uh, my friend Atelier Molo talked about the houses he has built in uh, in, uh, in Rarieda. I saw him yes. uh, in the mud, uh, you know, you know, creating mud to, to, to build those houses. And he comes and tells us this is affordable housing he's yes. giving the people of Rarieda. Please give the people of Rarieda distant houses, not mad wood houses. Every young person there is looking at you, say, oh, you know, that he, uh, I've seen your house on, on uh, K24, uh, that program, Faham Kiongo Ziwako. Yes, give the people of Rarieda houses like the one you live in, not the mad wood houses that you're busy trying to tell them that this is uh, affordable housing. Mm. It is not, and it does not do what this program that we are doing. So, I want to, uh, you to come to Kilifi and see what we are doing so that you can copy Please stop building uh, mad old houses for, for, for the people of, uh, of Rarieda and say that you actually have an affordable housing. I know you have reached 100 and something there. Yeah, you're making some effort, but up your game. Do better things for the people of Rarieda so that those people of Rarieda will remember. Not a house that will be built today. Tomorrow there's a flight of the house is swept away and they are houseless again. All right, okay. okay. Change your mind. No, first of all, uh, Owen Bayer has not built a single house with his own money. <laughs> when he talks of money from government, he says we. And he's a member of parliament like me. He is not even a member of the executive. And that defines the problem we have in this country. No one can oversight the executive because all members of parliament uh, who believe that they are part of the executive and are more executive than the executive. So, uh, secondly, uh, relatively speaking, I've visited your constituency, Owen. I used to be the chairman of Action Aid. I know your constituents are poorer than the ones in Rarieda. And so when I've done 100 for those who are needy, you should have done 1,000 for your constituents <laughs> because they're needier. <laughs> Thirdly, the difference is I do those reasonable houses from my own funds. I spend about 100,000. So when I say... 100, I've done 8 million of my own shillings. I've not taxed anyone. <laughs> you and those who think like you think you must tax even those poor people to tell them, people of your constituency who cannot afford a house, you still want to tax the 1.5, yeah, and they live in their rural areas to tell them you are building for them a house. Who from your village will live and come and live in Malindi town or Kilifi town? They will not. So they will just show those, they will see those houses on Viusasa, <laughs> and you will continue taxing them, and you are telling them that that is a good thing for them. I am sure 
you are not speaking for your people. I'm sure you're speaking for this regime. Let me now come back to some basics. You know, the day Wilson Sosion and Owen Bayer will start teaching me law is the day I'll stop practicing law. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I will, because we can't take too much time on this, I will give you some very basics in terms of land law. First of all, law and buyer, in Kenya right now, there's nothing like government land. What we have is public land. And do not compare a regime of any other country with ours. When it comes to land law, each country has its own unique regime. And in Kenya, the regime of land is defined in three. There's public land, there's community land, there's private land, only those three. So the first question you should ask yourself before you just generalize this thing and say it's government land is, is this land public land? Is it community land? Is it private land? If it's public land, then the question is, is it for national government or is it for county? And those are not idle questions. Those are real questions. You talk of sectional properties. Sectional properties does not operate on government land. It operates on private land. Where you get private land, you develop flats, then you're able to sell a flat to each person. They get individualized title. You cannot go to govern a public land that is not yet alienated. Then you construct and then you hope you will come under that section of properties act. It doesn't work that way. If you want to do that, you alienate that land first. Even if it's county land and they want to sell so that you, that title or lease you have is meaningful, it must be alienated. But the problem with this scheme is that no one wants to address those basics. You're just saying, oh, government land, so construct, we'll give you title. It doesn't work that way, Wilson Sosion. Let me just uh, advise you for free. You know, <clears throat> the irony is all these things, if they are done on county government land, and the issue is not resolved. Any county is within its legal rights to go to court and claim the entirety of whatever is developed. And if they claim it, they're under no obligation to give it to anyone because it's on county government land. That's why talking about land is not idle. So when you don't understand law like Wilson Sosion, then you say it's cheap, it's, it's not necessary. But the small things that look like not necessary, usually they're the basics. Secondly, Oh, and buyer, the constitution allows taxation. It does not allow over taxation. And I'll start teaching you the next <laughs> lesson from there. <laughs> All right, we'll take the next <laughs> lesson <laughs> after the break. Yes. Right, yes. we know the, the biggest <laughs> debate, of course, is the housing bill. Uh, will today also be <laughs> nailing the final, of course, nail as far as this debate is concerned. The president will be ascending uh, to this particular bill. Uh, which will be now law at State House for mid o'clock. We shall be crossing over there also once that is happening uh, here on the program, just to give you a world to world live coverage from State House on the ascension of this particular bill today. We want to take a short break when we cycle back. Of course, we continue with the education, right? Where we have Owen Bayer and uh, Wilson Sosion being educated on the matters law. So the second lesson no, 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 comes from the other side. <laughs> <laughs> on the other side of the break. <laughs>